everyone. Um, my name is Emmy Chang, and I'm the CEO of Superbloom. So today, um, I've heard, I'm sure you guys have heard lots of ICOs and talking about that. We're doing a token sale, but we're doing it outside of the US. So today, our talk will not be about an ICO, but more about what you guys can do to invest in the best ICOs there are and how you can make money in 2018. So um, are we all excited kind of to learn about making money in 2018? So I'm not a registered investment advisor. I'm not giving you guys investment advice. We're not a broker dealer. We have no securities licenses and every legal disclaimer there is. I'm simply giving you some information about the industry. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about myself, what we're doing at Superbloom, a little about the industry in 2017, because we've all sort of lived through it. Now we've been one year, um, and three things to kind of expect for this year. So sort of like my predictions, and then how you can be part of this future um, of 2018 so that in my opinion, I think we, we're still about two years out before crypto becomes something that a lot of people are using uh, more mainstream. So a little bit about me. I was a Y Combinator backed founder previously. I had an education technology company. I built a marketplace with thousands of users. And when we look at the crypto space right now, it has a lot to do with education. We, I was able to explain extremely hard technology terms coding and engineering terms to third graders. And with my background in engineering and an MBA from Texas, I was able, I'm able to explain extremely hard blockchain concepts, and by the way, add in some finance concepts and meld them together to explain it to everyone to make it super simple. So for Superbloom, this is sort of my personal vision of putting everything of my background together from electrical engineering and technology to finance to education and being able to create a better future for all of us. And in addition, YC has given me a lot of um, springboard for my previous company, mentors and network, et cetera. I think that this is what's missing in the market today. So I think that um, venture capital and angel investing has forever changed and Superbloom is sort of the forefront of this change. Um, previously, we were featured in Venture Capital Journal, Forbes, and Wall Street Journal. And um, our name, Superbloom. In 2017, it actually rained so much in California that it caused a superbloom of wildflowers. Uh, oh, that slide got mixed up. Uh, so there's a picture of it on the edge, but those are actually wildflowers in a desert in California. And that's the year that we hit superbloom of crypto. So we want crypto to go from the experienced $500 billion market, which these are the technical people, these are the engineers, people who understand Bitcoin. We want it to go to everyone to make it trillions. And that's the only way we can sustain it. So there's a lot of problems. Investing's hard. Participating in ICOs is intimidating. Security is a constant concern. We've had at least even two employees of our entity have their personal accounts on exchanges be compromised. And every day I log into my accounts, sometimes my personal accounts, not my company accounts, I'm always thinking that all of my money is going to be lost. And so I already have a mental figure in my head that I'm going to log in and no money is going to be there. And that's the way that I cope with this. So how are we going to be able to get millions of dollars into these platforms if every day everyone's thinking, oh, my $10 million is gone, or my $100,000 are gone, or my $100 are gone. So what we're building here is we want to make the first simplified crypto investment suite. This is a combination between what Coinbase set out to be and what AngelList is and what maybe, you know, Robinhood. Super, super simple, you're able to buy and click, manage all your assets and trade and sort of build this community around this because the future of crypto is really about community, finance, technology, venture capital, all together. And what does that future look like? We don't even know. We don't know what a tokenized economy will look like. We don't really know when people actually start buying and paying with things, with tokens and using technology. And I think that we need to evolve that together. So this is what we do. We make it easy to buy, manage, and trade, and we're starting with token pre-sales. So we look at deals in a specific different way. We definitely do analysis the same way a venture capital or angel investor does it. We have a number of partners that are VCs, and um, we call it syndicate consensus. We work with the top fund managers in the industry in crypto, and we take at least three of them that say, I'm going in at least $100,000 personally. Not advisors, not advisory firms, but people who actually put their money where their mouth is. And when three of those say yes, then we say, great, we can bring it to our member community. And then we start doing the due diligence, meaning we meet all of the founders in person, we talk to them, we look at if they're real people and how well they're gonna build product. 
Building your product is super hard. We're in the heart of Palo Alto in Silicon Valley. And all of my friends, I have known people who have burned 2 million. I've known people who have burned 20 million. I've known people who have burned $200 million. And they don't all succeed. And how now, when you have a founder who gets $100 million, or they get $10 million, and in a year it becomes $100 million because they didn't touch it and the market went up, why are they even motivated to build a product at all? And in my opinion, this is what's happening in the market right now. Product is not coming on. All these promises and all these things. We need to make sure that the product comes about or this whole thing implodes, right? What happens when billions and billions of dollars? So let's go into 2017 and talk a little bit about the industry. This is a number, it's widely contested, but this is a general number of $5.7 billion. This is how much was raised in ICOs in 2017. And it surpassed VC funding. I'm sure you've seen this chart um, in Q3, it surpassed VC, and then we have Q4 and we're in the middle of Q1 right now. This money is increasing significantly. Now, what does that mean for the guys down on Sand Hill Road a few blocks from here? Well, it means that they need to start looking at this industry as something that's really going to disrupt them. And 13, 20%, does anyone know what this number represents? Anything? Any guesses? <laughs> so um, I heard the index of all crypto. What? Yeah, so this is a stat that um, was published by Mangrove Capital. Um, if you bought every single ICO that was well publicized from January through October of 2017 and put in $10,000 a deal, and you would make $27 million. So every single fund manager, everyone who's crypto rich is like, I'm so fantastic. I am the bomb. I know how to invest in the best ICOs. Well, you know what? I could have thrown a dart every single one from January through October, still got 13 point X return. What does that say about the industry? It means two things. You haven't missed the boat, so there's still a lot of money to be made. And number two, we don't know. Nobody knows. No one's knowing what's going on, and you have to be well diversified because it is impossible. You know, I asked why Combinator. I said, why, why do you invest in 100 deals twice a year and throw $100,000? And um, Paul Bukite, which was the founder of Gmail, who's a big, well-known VC uh, angel investor, he said, Emmy, with all the resources in all of Silicon Valley and all the smart people and unlimited capital, if we knew how to build the next Google or Facebook, don't you think we would have already done it? Don't you think we would have hired the most elite people and put them with unlimited money to make Facebook, Google, Tesla, repeat over and over and over and over? What happens is that we don't know. And that is the, the magic, I think, about Silicon Valley is that nobody knows. And VCs actually know that nobody knows. They have a good idea of if I get a good team together, I have a good product, I have good users, but nobody knows that face good Facebook could become what it is today. And that's the same view that I think we need to take with ICOs. We don't know what's gonna happen. It's beyond the control of the founders whether or not their companies will succeed. So just another point is that we have a lot of investment improvements, but are they just hype? Are these all these founders just raising hundreds of millions of dollars, hanging out on the beach and chilling and writing some blog posts and uh, updating their telegram? Well, the top 20 tokens I pulled a list, and I just pulled this data today, this morning, from CoinMarketCap. Out of the top 20, five of them had ICOs in 2017. This is out of control. That means of the extra, you know, $400 billion that was created last year, all of these are contributed to by the $5.3 billion of ICOs. And the top 20, these are five of them that I just pulled this morning. So where will the ICO market go, and how does that affect the mass market. ICOs are absolutely important for us to build that pie to grow it. And what's more important is product as part of an ICO. They need to be able to build product, deliver a user experience that's super helpful, and be able to solve problems. And some of these products, um, I don't think there's any data or any apps on these yet, um, with EOS sort of leading the forefront saying that they're gonna come out with a few apps with their testnet coming out. So what I see in 2018 is that we're gonna see the first apps emerge. And so here are sort of my predictions for three things to expect in 2018. The first that we're gonna see more of a confluence between stocks and public financial markets in the US, around the world, and in tokens. 
So we're already seeing it between venture capital and in tokens and early stage founders. We're gonna see it in public companies. And these are examples like with Kodak and T0. And what does that mean for a trader or an investor or just an individual holding assets in both? Well, you're gonna see a lot of overview over these things. And we've already saw it with a dip last week. Was it a coincidence that Dow dropped lower than it ever did and crypto also dropped? As we get more and more players together, we're gonna to see that. The second real point, key point, is that we're gonna go from a white paper and an idea to real product, real founders, utility now. An example is the Telegram ICO. They have 200 million users. They're gonna go for an ICO compared to Ethereum, which had this whole idea of this ether. And then this is an example of a company that I'm working with, Tala, who has 12 million in VC funding and 600 enterprise paid users. They're coming out with an ICO because it's a way that you can build user base and access to capital. And the third thing is that we're gonna see more and more private deals. Because of public scams, security, all sorts of things, companies have no incentive to go and decentralize and get massive users in the public. And that's sad because that's what crypto was designed for. It was designed for us to be able to decentralize and give everyone access. But that's what, but it's a necessary evil. We need to be private so we don't have SEC issues, we don't have global security issues, securities law issues, and we don't have global hacks, like actual security issues. So more and more things are happening privately, and how do we get into the mass market if it's all private? If it's all people like us in the know, then how are we gonna get millions and millions of people out there access to crypto? So here's an example of Mobius who did $39 million and they did 35 million of it in pre-sale and Oracle that did 12 million of a two minute pre-sale. So as I leave you guys, I'm gonna think about how we do ICOs in 2018 to preserve the ethos of crypto. You know, when you combine financial markets and tokens, when you combine these things together, where does that leave us with a decentralized world? And I think it's really important as founders that we really focus on the product side and really as investors to focus on how does my investment contribute to a decentralized future? And um, does anyone recognize this picture right here? Crypto kitties, right? Yeah, of all of 2017's awesomeness and, you know, to $500 billion, this was the killer app of 2017. You know, Ethereum buying $126 average for cartoon cats on the internet on Ethereum, right? $11 million revenue in one week. They're the killer app of 2017. So I think we can do a little bit better in 2018. And I hope that you guys all invest and participate and be part of that future. So here's a little bit of summary. And um, if you want to be part of our launch um, at South by Southwest in a couple months, this is for the US. You can join our community. And if you're a foreign resident, um, you're welcome to go on our website when you're not in the US to consider our token sale. Thank you.